Hey, everybody, this is Bo. We're back in the Sports Lounge, guys. I know we had a couple days off right there enjoying everything that's been going on in basketball. But right now, we're going to move over right now. We're going to get a chance to talk to one of the best, Roy Nelson of the IFL. He is the champion of last year. He worked hard at it. He had a great match with Ben Rothwell. And I personally thought he took it to him, and he did prove it at the end of the season. How you doing, Roy? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Good. Now, when you, when you first got into the involved in the IFL, did you think it was going to explode the way it was and the fact that you've got a belt now? No, actually, the um, I figured the IFL was going to be a good, you know, like stomping ground and then uh, kind of use it to um, catapult my career um, in that organization. I think what's pretty impressive about this is that the IFL took off. A lot of people were just sort of looking at it kind of uniquely, and now it's becoming a major sporting event. It seems like the ratings are going up. Las Vegas is being involved. It's got to be kind of nice to see it from your standpoint. How has it grown? Yeah, it's um, it's it's good to see that it's uh, grown. Um, you know, like with any business, there's always you know the growing pains and ups and downs. So um, as long as we keep going in the positive direction, I can't wait. Now, as far as walking on the street now, do, are you starting to get people to come out, even neighbors and friends, going, I saw you fight, you're awesome? Um, not quite. Since I live in Vegas and um, <laughs> and I had a grappling uh, history from, you know, being out here and being in the fight uh, the fight business from working with um, other fighters, uh, they've always kind of known me kind of as a, we'll say, a local celebrity type thing, um, but... Um, like going outside of Las Vegas, um, I'm starting to see it, you know, like, oh, I see, I see you. You weren't you on a billboard or, you know, something like that. So it's kind of it's kind of cool and kind of funny. Now, what are some of the biggest things you've seen in the IFL as some of their changes, as some, as some of the positive feed? I know from our end here covering many different sports, we like the fact that what we saw as far as Las Vegas getting involved, it seems like any time Las Vegas you just got a double-edged sword. One, it validates what you guys do. But second, it's Las Vegas, and boxing has not benefited from having Las Vegas involved. But it's got to be nice to see that. I mean, it's, it's winding up being like the NFL and NBA as far as their visibility now of entering into your domain. Yeah, with um, Las Vegas being involved, um, if you're if you're a fighter or you know any fight organization, you have to fight out of Las Vegas because you want to be one of the big boys. Since Las Vegas is the fight capital of the world. Absolutely, and I think the nice thing too, as far as what you guys go through, I, I what's great about covering mixed martial arts is you guys. You guys are the best trained. You guys work out the hardest. And you guys are sort of like hockey players. You're very approachable and easy to get along with. You guys have so much involved and so much effort out there. It, it really comes forward as far as we, when we follow the sport. Talk a little about your training and background and how you figured out where you were going to go in this. Um, like, me getting involved with MMA was kind of a, kind of a fluke a little bit. Um, Actually, like when I first uh, saw the very first UFC back in '93, I was like, uh, you know, I know how to beat that Gracie guy, you know, just from being a wrestler. And slowly from there, I, you know, I've always been doing martial arts, you know, my whole life. Um, but then I slowly wanted to be a kickboxer, and then I started doing some kickboxing, and then I found, actually, I found in 2000, I found uh, jujitsu, and then jujitsu kind of led me into. Me and like Maurice Smith, Boss Rutten, uh, some of these guys that um, John Lewis, uh, my one of my instructors at the time, was uh, training, and then like Tito Ortiz, Rico Rodriguez, and then I started helping these guys out, training for their fights, being world champions. Like I helped Rico, you know, beat Randy, you know, it's just so I just kind of kindly always just helping these guys out, just train, and then but since I could beat them up in the gym, I looked at it like, well, you know. I'm not making any money as a uh, being as a trainer, so I might as well uh, go in and put my hat in the ring and and see how it goes. And so far, it's you know I've done pretty well um, on the winning side. So and just hopefully one day, just you know have that number one ranking. And I think having that, I think what's nice too, as far as what the league does for you guys, is that you do have a belt to to your favor now. You now have to say that you've gone into a certain league and and dominated. You're, the way you, what's so nice when you watch you fight is you, you really come across where people will not take you seriously until you get in there and you take the punches, but you give it right back and you don't stop. And that's the best part about watching you is you keep coming. You don't stop. 
And last year when you had the fight with Ben, I think that was one of the biggest, I mean, it was biggest biggest battles I think I saw in the IFL where Ben wasn't moving you at all. You were taking it to him every step of the way. And on my card, personally, when I was watching with a bunch of friends and colleagues here in the center, um, it looked like you won that fight. And it just won us over from that point forward because you just keep coming. You're like a tank. You just keep moving and moving and moving people around. Yeah, I you know I, I try to put on a show at least for the you know, for the fans to a certain degree, and but I always try to um, my biggest thing is just to, you know put the W, uh, but like whoever I'm fighting, the biggest thing is just to make them most uncomfortable. Now, as far as your training goes, what do you kind of do to get yourself ready for these fights and prepare mentally? It's Your schedule in the IFL is unique to any other league. You all are constantly training and constantly prepared. You've got a lot of fights that come into Evolve. So what do you kind of do to get ready in the, in the downtime and then be, um, build yourself back up again? Um, like the one thing that I don't do like a lot of fighters do is um, I don't really have any downtime. Um, I kind of look at this as a job. And I, you know, like, yeah, you go to job, you work and you work nine to five. I kind of go in, go to the gym, put my time in, and next day do the same thing. And then I have the weekends off. Um, and occasionally I'll put six days in, but usually Sunday's my day off. But I just, you know, put my four or five hours in a day and just call it a day. And then uh, after I'm done fighting, the only time I'll ever take a break is if I'm injured. And that's the thing too is is that you I think a lot of a lot of fans are starting to realize in the IFL it's not like the NBA and it's not like Major League Baseball. You guys when you go out for that 6 minutes or plus, you guys get just I mean you really put yourselves through war. I mean it's it's brutal to watch you. Right after the fight, what do you like to do to usually decompress from what you've been through? Um usually just um like the, like in the, with the after my last fight and with the Grand Prix, I just I went out and watched the fights with the fans, sat in the the bleachers and just hung out and drink a beer. <laughs> that's great. You fit right in with ninety percent of us who follow it. I mean, that's what we usually got a beer in our hand and uh, and, and watch the events. But uh, it, it's just it's great to see the evolution of the IFL. Um, what are kind of some nice things that you like in the IFL that has taken place that you didn't realize when you got involved, and now you're like, wow, I kind of like the way that's set up. That set themselves apart with the team format, um, but it, like that was the that was the biggest. Like I was a little, you know, like worry about it or like kind of shy about it with that that format. But then, um, but then this year they're kind of taking that away because it was a five man team, not the three. Uh, well, it's a six man team, but only three fighters fight at a time. So right now it's. Um, you know, I don't know if they're moving backwards or there's just a lot of growing pains right now. This is like the biggest transition for us to kind of, as fighters, to kind of, you know, stay on the, because um, everybody else kind of already jumped ship or 